the climate zonation can be modelled by plotting what we call climatic depend dependent indicators, the limestones and the coals and, and glacial related rocks and um, say evaporites like salt and so on. Uh, you plot the distribution of these, I've only shown coal and reefs here, the, co the reefs are in stars and the coal is in um, diamonds. Coral reefs only occurred between, say, 20 to 30 uh, degrees north and south of the equator. So you would expect that that limestone you know, coral reef data would plot and straddle the equator. And this is precisely what this uh, shows. Um, and similarly, the coal uh, occurs from the equator to sort of more temperate uh, zones. And, and uh, while it's not immediately obvious here, when you rotate it, you can see a little bit better. Um, and what the data also shows is there is a shift in the data. There is a northward shift in the data. It still parallels the equator, but there's a shift in the data. And uh, you can explain this by, uh, at this time, there was, at the Permian there was quite a, a major ice age over 10, 15 million years. And that was a permanent ice sheet uh, in the southern hemisphere as distinct from the northern hemisphere where we had these inland seas, the Tethy Sea in particular, this one, stretching all the way from the equator all the way up across the pole and also over the other side. So you had this potential for this warm equatorial currents to migrate north around the pole, melt the ice caps and, and uh, uh, so you, you just simply get a seasonal ice cap developed similar to the Arctic uh, ice sheet at present hence a much smaller ice cap in the northern hemisphere and a shift in these, these climate zones. We're just coming to the bit that you're all probably waiting for with bated breath. Um, you know, why, how does this all this occur? And what I'm about to show you is, is uh, speculation, because this question has never been required to be asked, as you can appreciate, uh, if you um, you, if you're led to believe that we have a static radius Earth, we live in terra firma Earth, there's no need to ask the question as to uh, how could it possibly expand, where would all this material come from? Hence, there's only a handful of researchers throughout the world that uh, have even bothered to question this. Um, <clears throat> what I've shown here, I'll le leave it up to you to read it. Uh, modern technology is such now that we can accurately measure the dimensions of the Earth from satellite laser ranging and the various other techniques, uh, and also measure the plate motion, uh, the migration of the continents on a yearly basis, down to sub-centimetre levels, accuracies. Uh, this has been going on since about 1976, but it wasn't until 1993 when they had enough uh, ground-based stations available throughout the world to be able to uh, use this information, this 17 years worth of information, to calculate a radius of the Earth. And what they found, as you can see there, uh, they found that the Earth was expanding over this 17 year uh, time period. The Earth was expanding by 18 millimetres per year. And my calculations are 22. So when you take into consideration the error factor, which is about three or four millimetres, it's pretty well spot on. NASA was spending, at that time, NASA was spending something like $500 million per year to prove that the Earth, well not prove, but uh, independently prove that uh, uh, plate tectonics was the way to go. And uh, so, as the last statement um, maintains, that uh, this was um, basically considered an error. And they recommended this be restricted to zero because this is closer to the true situation than an average of 18 millimetres per year. So in other words, they were not anticipating the Earth to expand. These measurements are extremely sophisticated mathematics and statistics from, taken from over 600 ground-based stations from around the world. And these are all fed into a supercomputer in Paris and spat out the other end. And if you delve deeper into their, their literature, um, you will come across uh, modifications, little tweaks to their to the mathematical formula to eliminate this error. So they weren't, they didn't even suspect 
that the Earth was expanding. So basically now, when I get questions on, yes, but uh, you know, NASA is measuring the size of the Earth and it's showing that it's not expanding. When you go into their, their website, you will see that, that the mean radial increase in radius is less than, say, less than one millimetre. It's just purely simply a, ma a manipulation of mathematics. I don't know if there's any mathematicians here, but um, you give a, a mathematician or a a geophysicist or a physicist, a set of data, and he'll manipulate it to whatever you want. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> then we're posed with a question, OK, um, the Earth is increasing, and the information suggests it's increasing. So is it a, uh, an increase in mass, or is it uh, a constant mass and an increase in, say, density, for instance? To cut this one short, the top two curves are a constant mass scenario, and it would suggest that during the very the pre-Cambrian, the very primitive Earth, uh, say density and surface gravity were extremely high, uh, which is extremely unlikely. And the, these figures, um, say 15 times the present, 15 to 20 or so times the present. Uh, values, these just do not occur in the solar system, uh, elsewhere in the solar system to date. So this, this is purely, this is just pure mathematical, mathematical manipulation of that, of the, the radius data and the radius formula that I showed you, uh, certainly the, the graph that I showed you early on. So uh, we're faced with the uh, suggestion that uh, increase in uh, Earth radius is, is caused by an increase in mass.